With grocery prices so high, your garden can come to your rescue as growing your food has never been more important. As a single parent and solo gardener, I've found the top 10 essential crops that offer the most value to feed your family. Join me as I share my personal tips and tricks to help you maximize your garden potential and stretch your budget further. Over the years, I've discovered which crops are the best for maximizing yield and nutrition, helping me stretch my budget further. From staple vegetables to versatile herbs, these crops are easy to grow. They're easy to bring to the table and of course, incredibly rewarding too. For the past 11 years, I've been growing in two different large gardens, my most recent one being 28 raised beds. I've experimented with several different varieties of peppers and tomatoes, summer and winter squashes, pumpkins, several varieties of herbs, potatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, garlic, carrots, parsnips, beets, radishes, cantaloupe and watermelons, um, salad greens, beans, peas, corn, tomatillos, ground cherries, cucumbers, and that's to name a few. These past 11 years have been here in South Carolina and before that I grew some of these things in a much shorter growing season up in Michigan. Now that I'm moving, it's going to be in the same area, I'm just downsizing. I'm really trying to analyze the things I've grown throughout the year so that I can choose the highest value crops for my smaller space that are really going to help me cut my grocery bill and feed my kids and I. July is the peak of the summer growing season for most of us, but it's also time to think about summer planted crops that will be harvested in fall and also crops like garlic that are planted in the fall. Here where I am in upstate South Carolina, that's mid-October. There's also never a wrong time to think about next year's garden. Let's get down to these top 10 valuable crops in no particular order. I grow hundreds of dollars worth of herbs every single year. There are so many varieties of herbs and most are really extremely easy to grow. In most climates, there are varieties you can grow that are perennials, and that means they're going to come back in the spring year after year. Some of these include chives, mint, sage, thyme, and also rosemary. I know you've seen herbs in the store, but they are so expensive, whether fresh or dry, and you can only imagine the amount of them you could grow in containers. I've had chives growing from the same initial plants that I started from seed years ago, and then every year I divide them and rejuvenate them and plant them in different places. I do like to grow almost all of my herbs in grow bags because that keeps the ones that spread separate from my actual raised garden beds and they're also portable. I love that part. Based on the things that I consistently cook for my family, I always grow my staple herbs, which are parsley, basil, chives, and cilantro. I've also grown certain herbs for tea like mint and lavender. I use all of my herbs both fresh and I also dehydrate them. They're also so very easy to preserve. You cannot go wrong with them. You can even freeze them in little cubes with olive oil that you can conveniently access while you're cooking. You can also grow hundreds of dollars worth of salad greens, even in very small spaces. There are lettuce varieties made for your specific microclimate, guaranteed. Lettuce varieties, I think, are so much fun to shop for and experiment with. And one seed packet will grow you at least a couple dozen of those plastic pre-washed containers of lettuce that you can find at the store. Even if you live in a northern climate with a shorter growing season, you can extend your season by covering your plants or using an easy DIY hoop house. If you live in a hotter climate like this, you can extend your growing season since lettuce is normally a cool season crop by buying heat resistant varieties and using shade cloth. Lettuce is absolutely another versatile crop that you can grow in containers. I used to grow it in containers on my deck in Michigan. I don't know if you like kale or chard, but I'm trying to like those better because they're so easy to grow and they really do provide a bulky amount of greens. They just haven't really been my favorite, but I'd like to keep trying and making things like soups, kale chips, and using them in my daily smoothies. Really, no matter how you eat your greens, growing your own will provide more nutrition while reducing your grocery bill. Really, now we need to talk about sweet corn because it's a staple crop that you can grow a lot of in raised beds. I've even seen gardening friends growing it successfully in grow bags. I made a really detailed video about how to grow sweet corn successfully in your backyard garden so I'm just going to touch on a couple of the main points here. You can grow a lot of it at home. It's easy to grow and it's also versatile in the ways that you can preserve it which is 
huge when you're trying to save money on groceries. My favorite way is to pressure can it, but lots of people prefer to freeze it to use in recipes and eat as a nutritious side dish throughout the year until there's more fresh corn available from the garden. It can even be dehydrated for long-term storage. And if you grow an open pollinated variety, you can save your seeds every single year. It's really easy to dry ears of corn as long as they're kept away from birds and squirrels because they will go after them in a split second. Two fruits I've been consistently growing for the past 11 years are blueberries and strawberries. Also, if you have the space, raspberries and blackberries are totally worth it because they're really low maintenance and as you know, they're really expensive at the store. I started out with bare root strawberry and blueberry plants that I ordered online from Organic Farms. Blueberry bushes are going to produce for years, but it does take a few years to get them producing heavily depending on the age of the bushes that you're starting with. You do have to keep an eye on your soil because they thrive in more acidic conditions. Blueberry bushes can self-pollinate, but for best results, plant at least two different varieties because you're going to get a bigger crop of fatter, sweeter blueberries if they bloom at the same time and then cross-pollinate. You can buy bare root strawberry plants once and get free plants every year by propagating the runners. I've made detailed videos about this if you'd like to see how to have fresh strawberry harvest every year. Both blueberries and strawberries are versatile and can be grown in containers. Squash is another high value crop that can provide a lot of versatile and nutritious food for your family. I've grown a lot of different varieties of squash, but I've really honed in on zucchini, butternut, and spaghetti over the past few years in my raised beds. I would actually really like to look for varieties that the squash vine borers don't like because they're so bad in my area. And growing varieties that they don't like is probably the least maintenance and best way to prevent their damage. Winter squash stores for longer than zucchini, but I really like to make freezer meals like zucchini enchiladas that my kids really love and also zucchini bread and I just freeze the loaves. I'm just going to go ahead and group cucumbers with the squash because they're also cucurbits. I grow cucumbers every single summer because my kids and I love them, but the plants are also really prolific and the cucumbers are so hydrating and delicious to eat in the summertime. Broccoli's versatility makes it a valuable crop to have on hand for meal planning. And by the way, this is my bolted bed of broccoli that I just left alone after it started to bolt earlier this summer because we're moving. Broccoli is a cool season crop, so depending on your location, it can be grown both in the spring and the fall, which of course extends your gardening season, allowing you to have fresh produce for a longer period throughout the year. Here where I live, I have the best harvest when I plant in the late summer and then I harvest around December. But you can also plant in early spring for a summer harvest. I like to harvest my broccoli all at once and then steam it and freeze it to pull out as side dishes for the upcoming months. My kids will actually only eat garden broccoli and I can't blame them because the flavor is absolutely amazing compared to store-bought broccoli. I've also figured out that Bell Star broccoli does the best in my garden, so my experience is to experiment with varieties until you find one that loves your garden. It's a lot easier to grow than you think it is and if you're growing it in the fall, you're going to most likely notice that there is way less pest pressures. Tomatoes and peppers, peppers and tomatoes, the quintessential summertime heat loving crops and I kind of grouped those together as one crop. We love tomatoes and peppers fresh in salads, sandwiches, salsas, and in sauces. I've also done my share of canning them for salsa and sauce. I've also frozen Roma tomatoes, which I chop and use in things like omelets and frittatas. I've chopped and frozen and also dehydrated peppers to use in dishes like chili. I love pimento peppers and I love pimento cheese and I love all different varieties of hot peppers and I've canned them, but they're kind of a treat for us and they're not really a household staple, so those varieties with the exception of my favorite purple jalapenos that I can't go without, I'll squeeze those plants in if I have the space in my garden. It really depends on how you like to eat your tomatoes and peppers, but you can see that they're a very versatile crop. There are tons of different varieties, they're really easy to preserve, and they provide a lot of food. Growing potatoes at home can significantly reduce grocery costs, especially considering their high yield and storage capabilities. They can produce a large yield from a relatively small planting area, and each little seed potato piece planted yields multiple potatoes, providing an abundant harvest for you. You know how versatile they are in the kitchen and growing them at home allows you to choose varieties you can't even find at the store. If your climate allows and when stored properly in a cool dark place, potatoes can last for several months. If you're able to store them long term, you can save them to plant the following season. I've grown potatoes in raised beds and lots of gardeners have success growing them in large grow bags. I've found sweet potatoes to be even easier to grow and they store for a bit longer for me in the pantry since I lack a cool dry location in our climate. You can buy slips online or they're really easy to start yourself by just setting a few sweet potatoes aside. One raised bed can yield hundreds of dollars worth of nutrient packed sweet potatoes. Whole beans and bush beans I think are the easiest garden crop to grow and the seeds are so easy 
easy to save year after year and have high germination rates, making them even more valuable in the garden. They're also legumes, so they provide nitrogen fixation in the soil after the plants die, enriching the soil and improving fertility for future crops. Depending on when you harvest, they can be eaten as green beans, shelling beans, or saved as dry beans to use in things like chili and refried beans. The plants behind me are pretty much on their last leg because I've let them go so that I can dry these out and take the seeds with me when we move. Beans can be grown in a wide range of climates and soil types, making them adaptable to lots of different gardening environments and pole beans can be grown vertically to maximize limited gardening space. They continue producing over an extended period, allowing for multiple harvests from the same plants. I usually grow rattlesnake beans because I like the savory and nutty flavor when they're dried, similar to pinto beans, and they make the best refried beans in the whole entire world. In terms of preserving, I've pressure canned green beans, but my favorite way to preserve them is to let them dry out right on the plants and use the dried beans in lots of different meals throughout the year. And finally, garlic is another really easy to grow and low maintenance crop that I keep growing every year because you get a lot of bang for your buck. You get one whole garlic bulb from each little clove you plant, and like the previous nine crops we've talked about, fresh garlic is expensive to buy at the store, especially organic varieties. Most varieties you can't even find in the store. You can use it fresh, you can use it roasted, dried, powdered, and pickled, making it a really versatile staple in the kitchen. It's easy to store long term so you can keep your best bulbs for replanting every single year. I always grow garlic in raised beds, but it can also be grown in containers. Another benefit of garlic is that it's in the ground for months while being a natural pest deterrent for most vulnerable plants, making it a great companion plant protecting from pests like aphids and spider mites. Man, that breeze feels good. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today and exploring the top 10 essential garden crops that I think can help feed your family and stretch your budget further. Remember though that growing your own food not only provides fresh, nutritious produce, but it also brings a huge sense of accomplishment and sustainability. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, these 10 crops are sure to make a big impact on your garden and your table. If you'd like, I'd love it if you'd share your own favorite staple garden crops in the comments below, and I hope you'll join me again in the garden.